Okay, I believe, according to YouTube, I should be live. I'll give it a moment. Yeah, looks like I am. Okay, well, hello to anyone watching and anyone watching back on uh, once this gets posted. Right, so this evening, uh, some of you will be aware, anyone that's seen my uh, posts will be aware that I recently past 500 uh, followers actually it's got a bit past that now uh, 500 followers on twitter which um i was quite amazed at uh considering what i do so i um i thought i'd mark it with a special 4k uh render um and i did a, a vote on which girls would be included uh, and as you could probably see from the image in front of you uh louise and kimiko were the winners and uh so i'm going to set that up today now if you're wondering what 4k render looks like i mean the, the detail the reason why i want to use for 4k uh if i open this image so this is one i did recently of uh cindy and if you zoom in i don't know how well this will translate onto uh youtube the detail is the detail on the actual skin rather than it being complete noise that you actually retain these details that is what i'm hoping to achieve with uh, this image now another thing uh, i did just not too long ago is actually looked at some poses um, and actually downloaded this one uh, which is a sister pose pack um, and I liked this one specifically, so I thought I'd give that a go. So I bought the characters in, in preparation. Um, we've got Louise and Kimiko here. And I've given them some clothes, obviously, so that they're YouTube safe. But one thing I did start doing, see this skirt actually had these braces attached to it. Uh, and I don't like that because it doesn't suit the character. So what I, I did before I started streaming is I've actually gone in with the geometry tool and just removed this part here. And I'm actually going to remove uh, the rest of the braces. But I thought I'd do that on stream just so you can see exactly what's happening. A lot of assets that you get, um, you can actually go in and edit them um, and don't be don't be afraid to do that you know quite often uh you could have a skirt you like the skirt but you don't like the braces just use the geometry tool and, and remove them it's actually very effective so all we need to do is we select the skirt and we go to hide that get a better image for you guys go to tools geometry editor and you'll get this little red circle um what you want to do is selection type make sure it's on polygon selection um once you've select, uh, selected it it will stay on polygon selection but you make sure it's on polygon selection and literally you just click and drag and because you you see well, i'm moving outside of the actual asset because we've got the asset selected it's only going to select the polygons in that asset so the skirt you see it doesn't select anything else now we want to select everything on these uh these two straps now what i'm going to do is i'm going to hide her hair just to make it easier for me to select the straps so what i tend to do is you hold down control that will allow you to select more than one item and i'll do the same on the back and i'm just selecting some of it so i keep control held down and i press press the plus key and you see that it selects more of the polygons the same on either side now i keep using the plus key quite a few i think it's selected the top but obviously it's clipping through the uh the top there which is fine and then just 
right click. Now you can do geometry editing and delete uh, selected polygons. But what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to hide them in this case. So hide selected polygons. Like that. There you go. You can see that those straps have been completely uh, hidden. Let's give her some hair again. And I think that looks a little bit better. Now, I think the next thing we're going to do, let's just have a quick, Kim, quick check of Kimiko. I think she looks all right, actually. Now, these both these skirts uh, I will be running a D4 simulation on. Uh, this is just to help. Uh, when we use the pose, they will look better, um, especially Kimiko's one, because she will be in front and, well, you'll, you'll see when I get to that, what that will look like. I think what we want to do is find product. I've done so many bedroom renders recently. Um, I kind of feel like a change, something like a... A living room or something something where they would be together um so i'm just gonna have a look through here and see if anything grabs me it's literally showing me everything so let's just try typing living and see what we get okay so yeah christmas maybe not um That is not quite what I want. I like the idea of a... See, that's an attic room. I like the idea of having some sunlight coming from outside. Uh, and in fact, that's not even a living room, so... Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at uh, some environments see what we've got we might go with creating creating a room i'd rather not i'd rather use a pre-built uh, that's a bathroom now there that might be an idea let's have a look at that That is that's not no, that's just poses. Don't want poses. We want now you may hear uh, the sounds of children in the background arguing between themselves. This might work. Let's uh merge that into the scene and see what it looks like. When we click this, this allows us to click and drag and use the WASD keys to navigate. Uh, I'm not bothered about the kitchen. Uh, I recognise this apartment. Anyone that's played my game will recognise this apartment if you're on a uh, specific route. So... I think I think we might edit this a bit. Uh, so I'm thinking of moving this sofa perhaps with a pose there coming in through that yeah that might work but first things we're going to do is oh that's tiles like that okay uh is get rid of uh, stuff we don't want um for example like this down here so we just double click to select i'm just going to hit delete get rid of those um don't want this or this or this 
cushion so and we'll get rid of this bin so I like the idea of the sunlight shining through here especially as I might move those bars up rotate them round No, not why. About one hundred and eighty. Because that sh should provide uh, some nice uh, reflections, some nice shadows. So I'm thinking the sofa there. Yeah, let's uh, let's move that sofa. Maybe even those pictures as well. And OK, pillows uh, don't come with it. That's fine. Let's rotate. And move. Completely impractical having a sofa next to doors like that, but that doesn't matter. I think we'll get those pictures and put them on there as well. And that's going to be, where's that going to be? This one. Okay, so I think um, we may not put the cushions in. Just because of the space of them being sat down. So let's do the pose and see how they fit. We want this one for her and this one for her. You can see what I mean about the uh, the way the skirt hangs is um not very realistic so I will be changing that For now I'm not going to worry about how the skirt clips in I'm only going to worry about the position of the hands and the feet We're going to turn her around a little bit more. And then move her up. Okay, let's get Louise. Bring her over. Need to line them up. Should be in line with her head. I think we're going to need to make some changes to this sofa. Now, can
Can we? Yes, we can. So all I've done is I've just scaled it up. 120%. Scaled it up so it makes it a bit longer. Which means we can then position... Position Louise a little bit better. I will need to do something about the hair, but that's fine for now. I think. I think that works for the pose, for the, the join of them both together. I won't worry about the knees. Need to pull these up slightly, but that looks fine. And run a deforce on those. And easiest way, let's uh, try bending these. Then again, boots on sofa, I don't think so. Let's uh, remove them. Go, and that should actually make it a little bit easier. So when you are modeling things, you want to make sure that the soft physics, so that gives an effect that it is uh, going inside clipping, as we call it. And that's a little bit too much. So I actually want to bring the foot up slightly. I'm actually going to just try clicking and dragging and seeing what's that's done to the leg. Yeah, I'm not happy with that. Let's all we need to do is just move that up ever so slightly and then bring that down. The same for this one. Okay, let's just have a quick check of that and see how that's connecting. Not too great. You can see it's floating, so we need to bring that down. Easiest way to do that. Select the hand. Bend it up slightly. And then pull it down. We'll see it will have better contact better contact let's adjust fingers pull that up slightly Right, I'm happy with the way her poses. Let's actually let's uh, amend that hand. So I'm going to click on the hand, focus on it. We want it to join onto her knee. So let's try and click and drag. Place it. That's looking pretty good. We want to just pull it up slightly. And we don't need to worry about the view of this side because the camera is going to be sort of where they're looking. So it's going to be in this sort of area. Do need to pull that finger out though. And 
Right then. So I think I'm happy with that pose. I'm just checking. Louise's arms look OK, actually. What we want to do is sort out the hair if we can. See what morphs see what morphs we get it's a little bit too close so i think what we'll do just gonna see if Perhaps if she's a bit lower, I'm not sure if it'll work with. No, I think I want it. Out there, let's see what's that's done with the. Legs. I can fix that just by bringing them up a little bit, and then angle that down. That looks a little bit better there. Actually, doesn't quite look like she's clipping in. Um, so now we need to do her hair so louise's hair let's um if we do right we put it behind the shoulder Yeah, I think that works. I'm going to try and see if I can do something about this. Clipping. It might be okay because of the angle. I think we might get away with it. What we do need to do, however, is adjust this hair so that it lays properly. So I double click to select the item and it's the we want front left. Bring it forward a bit and to the side. Okay. Um gravity's down you see it's out a little bit too much we want to see I like the idea of it being on the other side of the arm but it's not going to work so we'll have to bring it inside but the line of gravity is down here so it should actually be a little bit further forward About like that. Let's have a look at the back left. Um, 
she's leaning so it will be on the side okay i think that looks okay so i think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to simulate uh, we'll probably simulate this skirt first. Um, so we need to check everything that... Actually, there's an easier way of doing this. What you could do, if you select the item... Um, oh, look at all these cameras. I don't want all of these. Just get rid of them. So select the skirt. That says simulation. You then go over to simulation settings and um, we want to start from memorized pose we want to do it to current frame uh, everything else remains the same before we do that though we're going to turn off the hair we're going to completely hide kimiko and everything else should be fine uh, yeah we'll hide all that um and then with the skirt selected which we've got it selected there click on this here and you can go simulate selected and that should put her see brilliant simulation gotta love deforce let's clear that I know why it didn't work. Okay, so normally you could do simulate selected and it would only simulate that item. We're going to have to go through and check right and check anything that's got simulation on it and just freeze it because you only really want to run the simulation on one thing at a time. So free simulation, this is on Kimiko. Um, so free simulation, free simulation, freeze. And that doesn't have one, nor does that. Her hair does, so freeze that. Um, and they don't have one. Okay, so hopefully this time it works. Otherwise, I'm looking for a new skirt. Uh, that's off dynamic, yeah. Hey, current frame, start bones from minimize pose. Right, hopefully this time. There we go, that's better. So what, it's, so what it will do now is it will move her into that pose. And as it does, it will simulate how the, um, the skirt will move, um, almost like an animation. Once it's done that into the pose, it will then run the simulation for how how the actual skirt will sit in the final pose. So it sort of simulates it twice, sort of. And you don't have to start uh, the simulation for memorized pose for everything, but something like this, especially skirts, um, and especially long skirts, uh, I find it's better to do that because it gives it a much more natural look, as you will see. Now, why did I hide a whole load of stuff? Because this is very CPU intensive. It doesn't actually use your GPU for simulating. Um, it It's using the CPU. And if you've got hair, especially detailed hair, that it has to load those textures as well and it, it just slows it down so if you hide things it makes it faster she looks like she's falling over but you can actually see the way the skirt is hanging is uh, already more natural than what it was before
And one thing I uh, I do always say when um, when you've completed the simulation is save it because uh, there's nothing worse than clearing a simulation by accident. So once that reaches 100%, the top one will go to 50 and then it will do the simulation on the final pose. Thankfully, this is a little bit quicker than uh, than the first one. Now, if you have uh, an asset that doesn't have DeForce on it, that it hasn't got this simulation, um, you can add it. You can add it to anything, um, even her hair. I've done that before. All you need to do is select the asset, click on this up here, and go to Edit, Geometry. And you see you've got a few options here, and one of them, Add Deforce Modifier Dynamic Surface. And you just add it on, and then you can run the simulation. Now, you have to be careful because not every asset is built the same, and not every asset can, uh, can be simulated. Um, so let's bring her hair back for now and let's see how that looks with the other character. You can see it looks a lot better and a uh, little bit of clipping there but we won't worry about that because it shouldn't be viewable. I think the next thing we need to do is save it. I'll uh, we'll name it something appropriate. So we're going to freeze the simulation on that. See, look at look at how that drapes. That should come out kind of nice. Still thinking about saving. It'll get there eventually. Okay, that's done. So the skirt, freeze the simulation. Now we're going to simulate hers. So let's hide Kelsey or Louise. Kelsey's the model. And on her skirt, click off the freeze. We're going to do the exact same thing. Hide her hair. Make sure these are all correct, which they are. And we'll click simulate. Thankfully, we'll only need to do these once.
A lot of people are afraid of uh, running DeForce and things like that. And I think your renders can look so much better if you just uh, take a little bit of time and uh, and simulate them. So many games I see where clothes especially just haven't been simulated, especially when I recognize clothes that I know have a DeForce modifier and they just don't uh, they just don't run the simulation. So that is a very uh, uh, short skirt. So we'll see. I should be able to make it longer if necessary. But I'll see how it looks. What I would like to show you guys is um, how to do uh, uh, God Rays. I need to find my notes on it, though. OK. And let's bring her hair back. Now, I'm wondering what sort of angle... Perhaps that might be interesting. We'll see. I'll go with that for now. I may, I may change the view um, a little bit. Uh, something I need to do. Is change the colour of those. So if we do anything more, let's add a depth of field. So I've created my camera. Go to parameters, go to camera, depth of field, click that on. You see we've got this uh, box here. You can see it's like two boxes with this uh, green line in the middle of it. This is the focal point. So from there and contained in this, let's there you go, uh, contained in this. So that will be the focal point. At the moment, the camera is focused here. So that means if I was to um, do this and go to RA, actually, I don't know what um, render settings we've got at the moment. Sun sky. We'll see. Hopefully, there'll be enough light. Barely. Um, you can see that that's completely blurred. I mean, apart from it being dark, it's completely blurred. It's because the focal point is not on them. So what we need to do, the focal distance controls where that goes to. So normally you want to bring, so the green line is at the start of what you want to focus on. So for example, we want to focus on them so you bring the green line so it's in line with front of uh, of Louise like that. Now, just because they're outside of this box doesn't mean that they'll be out of focus. What it does mean is that they will begin to be out of focus. Um, but let's say you wanted a much bigger, you wanted them completely in focus. So what you could do is you bring the green line and you can see that they're slightly outside. This f-stop, you can increase that, and that increases the size of this. So see, you could have that. But the side effect to this is that because this box is bigger, the drop-off for the focal point, the, the blurring effectively of the background and the foreground uh, will be less. So it's not as effective. So I tend to, on something like this, I would keep it at 22, which is the default. And I'll bring that forward. Now let's go to the camera. Now again, the lighting's terrible. Let me... Um, try and... 
fix that by just smacking that up to something ridiculous. Just so we get some light in here. It doesn't really work because um, all the light's coming from outside. Um, yeah, okay. Default that. Let's put very quick um, main we're going to make an emissive surface and the plane in up over that should do Surfaces, materials, uh, plane, data. <laughs> Emission. Okay, change it to white. Effectively turns it on. In fact, any color turns it on. Um, not bothered about color. KCMD, that should be fine. Go to camera. And now we should actually have some light inside. So I can show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, lots of light. Let's uh, knock that down. Right the way down. So, what you should be seeing is uh, I need to curl those toes down, as I've just uh, realized. But you can see that they are actually in focus, or a bit dark, but they are in focus. Whereas the back here, is blurred out um, it helps if I do that there we go I mean th th this lighting is terrible this is not going to be final but this is just to show you um, that couch needs color so you can see that they are in focus just slightly blurring on on the back there and then the background is is blurred you can sort of see it, the pictures how it is now obviously we're, we're far from finished and that lighting was just to give you an idea um all these toes let's do that unfortunately you can't curl each individual toe Right, okay, so setting up a god ray. Right. This is me looking through uh, my notebook where I wrote down the exact settings we need. There we go. So God rays will kill your render times. I'm not even joking, but they can look good. So the first thing we want to do is we actually want to have a light source uh, from outside. Now, here would make the most sense. So create a light, a light. Um, make sure we angle it on the people. So I just select the spotlight. We go up slightly. Obviously, this is the main intensity, and then it drops off outside of this. Now we want more light shining in through this middle part here. So what we're going to do is we go to the the spotlight. We go to light. The spread angle. We'll put that down to uh, forty. And you see what that's done is that's made this part smaller. Um, so there'll be more light here. 
um, point is fine because it's effectively sunlight but sometimes changing it to uh, a disc or a sphere uh, is a good idea but for now we'll just leave it like that the luminous flux again we'll leave it like that however we will drop this down to natural sunlight which is about 5500 5000 to 5500 is natural sunlight uh right so we've got that set up what we need to do i'm going to hit Control l so that it creates artificial light so i can see what i'm doing um that plane can disappear for now what we're going to do is create a, a big solid box here so create a plane uh cube um yeah five meters that, that'd be fine it's probably a bit too big yep let's uh i selected the wrong thing let's select our cube let's scale the y down there's no point in going outside of the building and scale the z down as well scale the z right way down to there and i think we can scale x down as well because we only want the rays to be in here and we might have to want to cover that so um z can increase just a bit just to make sure we're covering covering the doors there which we are okay so we have our box um now we need to edit the surface properties of these uh so the first thing to do is glossy layered weight should be at zero um then share glossy inputs to off um turn it to black which turns that off and reflectivity all the way to zero the refraction index to one and the weight all the way up and what that does is it makes the cube invisible so we can actually see what's going on inside and thin walled off and it's sss is subsurface scattering this is what creates the dust particles or the uh, uh the, yeah the dust particles that will react to the sunlight coming in um so we want it on uh you can you can change these to anything really but um this is what i have written down in zero three and direction five now you won't notice anything in there but what you should hopefully notice when we go back to camera view um, uh, and that's the other thing as well this only works when the camera is outside of the box if the camera's inside the box you don't see the effect so camera view what i'm going to do i'm going to save it and that's saved very quickly and then go video i will And we should hopefully see some rays coming down from here. But we do need to adjust the lighting. So we go to our spotlight. And let's put a couple of zeros in that. Okay, that's much stronger. So these shadows are a bit too strong, but I will be adding a uh, a light from this side what is uh, it's selecting the cube let's 
There you go. And it's probably hard to see because it's not the uh, well lit from the other side. But there is a difference where the sunlight's coming in, where the, the light's coming in. There will be some some rays, but we do need to light up inside here. I think we might make that. This might be a bit too much, but we need strong light from outside. If I... default that and that there you go again it needs to be more light but I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it but here you can see and here you can sort of see some of the rays so they're like darker and lighter um, let's see if I put the denoise on it might not work it might do, it might not. Yeah, it doesn't really like it. But <laughs> these squiggles are the rays. <laughs> but obviously, denoising it, uh, it, it doesn't like it so much. So we'll turn that off for now. But there, there's a ray there. And there, you can see it's darker, darker, darker there. And here as well. But we need... I'm actually happy with the light coming from outside, but I think we need something in the room. And they need expressions on their faces. But we need something in the room just to lighten the room up a little bit. Um, what you can always do, if that's not enough, you can actually uh, decrease the spread angle. And that will make the intensity brighter but it should also make the difference between them more noticeable. But it's a little bit too bright on there. But you can see a little bit more here. Hopefully you can see it. I say, and when this renders after several hours of rendering, um, it will, yeah, I mean, you sh <laughs> hopefully you can see the start of a ray. Now, the fact that you can see it's so noisy should tell you how long this would take to render. Now, I don't have a super high-powered graphics card. I, I wish I did, um, but I don't. So I know this will take a long time to render. If I give this some extra time, hopefully you can see here, here, and along here that there's definitely some rays coming in. Now this is a little bit too bright on the characters and, and I'm, I actually want it, uh, to set that back to 40, I believe it was. A little bit more light in the room. Not too much because uh, we, we actually want a fill light, which is what this plane will do. Um, in fact, if I turn that on, let's see what that does. So yeah, that brightens the room up. But hopefully we don't lose our rays, which I don't think we do. But I need to uh, sort out their expressions. But yes, given enough time, enough render time, um, lots and lots of time, this will actually uh, should come out rather nice. And especially as I'm going to be doing it in 4K, I fully expect to be rendering this for a minimum of 30 to 35 hours as a minimum. That might sound like a lot, but an image that I will show you in a moment when I find it, which is uh, this one, this image, this took 28 hours to render 
and this has very subtle light rays on it. So sometimes rendering takes a long time. There you go, see, with the plane on, that is her expression, yeah, their expressions need sorting out. And I also need to sort out their eyes are uh, too dark. So I think I need a directional light shining in their faces just to highlight the eyes. But you can definitely see the rays coming in. So let's go back to touch. What time is it? Now we've got a few minutes left. Um, let's give them an expression and actually have them looking at the camera. I've got a script for that. Yeah, that doesn't work. Move your head. Yeah, I think we will. I might change where the camera is. Make sure she is looking at the camera. Don't want you moving your head. That looks okay. We'll give her some makeup. Resets. This is why I keep them named on the base model that I used. So I remember. Um, Darker eyes is always good to go for. And I think I won't do the lips, but we will do fingernails with mm. we'll see. Now let's actually have them smiling. Now when you do expressions, you need to be careful with these because although you can uh, let's let's um, let's zoom in on her face. So you can you can like say this angry, yeah, slap it up right to hundred percent, and that looks terrible. That's over the top. I tend to find around about the 60% is just enough um, in the 40%. But you can also combine combine them. But 100% is normally a little bit too much. There are some exceptions, like this flirting ones. It's not too bad. Um, but be careful with these because uh, they can be a little bit too much. Um, and sometimes you want to use your own. So we want for her. And where it's like this, that's it. just view that as a percentage. Not like that. And for her, let's have a look at. I think one of these might work actually. The. Now, temptation might be to say, well, why don't I just go to mouth and go mouth smile. The problem is all that does is move the mouth. See, um, doesn't touch the eyes. When you smile, your eyes move, your eyes move up. In fact, let me let me go to that expression. Yeah, watch her eyes change, the cheeks move. Yeah, so that's something to bear in mind. Now I need a light, but I need the light to be inside the box so that I don't get light rays. So probably if I do it here. So we're going to create a light. I 
think that's not inside the box. Let's move it in. Okay. I'm going to hide the cube for now, just so that it uh, renders a bit quicker. And then change that to a rectangle and change that to 25 by 25. Yes, this big black box is the uh, the light. And you can see their faces and their eyes are a little bit brighter. We'll probably leave the luminous flux, but we will change that down to 5,000. And you might be wondering, well, how do you get rid of that render emitter off? And there you go. That's effectively become a ghost light by turning uh, the the actual emitter off. So let's before I finish, let's put the cube back in. And of course, I think it's not going to like it because. Yeah, because of the cube, OK. That just means I need to be. outside the box so actually here should do it might need to increase the intensity of the light like this okay Yeah, let's put another zero on that, see what that's like. It might be a bit too much. Right. Well, that's all the time I've got. That's all I've got time for. So I'm going to call it here, but I still need to tinker around with the lighting here. It's still not quite light on the eyes. Um, I want it just a little bit lighter, especially on hers. Um, there are some other ways of doing this. Uh, I could put a, uh, a ghost light inside there, which I think I will do. Yeah, I think I will do that. Anyway, got to tinker around with this, but hopefully I should have it done and rendered by um, this time next week. Anyway, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.